Hello. Over the last year or so, it's been our pleasure to meet with a variety of our faculty members in various disciplines and have them share what they do here at Philmont, why it's important, how it fits into a ministry on behalf of the Lord. Lots of different things get touched upon, and whether it's Mr. Kunkel speaking to us about Bible, whether it's the art teachers uh, bringing up the names of Picasso and Rembrandt, or whether, as it is today, our math teachers talking to us about what for some of us is a little bit of a mystery. Uh, I think it's exciting for those of you out there in our greater Philmont audience to get to actually sit down and talk or be shared with by our faculty. So today we have with us our advanced math folks. They do teach math uh, from first grade on up to fifth grade. Uh, but today we have Julie Swope from middle school and we have Beth Van Veldhuizen and Ron Bierma who teach math in our uh, high school. And they're going to share a little bit about themselves as well as what they do here at school. So we hope you enjoy our time together. Welcome. Uh, as we said, uh, we have three people here. And uh, Mr. Birma, you have seniority. You've been here the longest. What brought you to Philmont? How long have you been here? I've been here 30 years. Wow, you look very young for someone who's been here 30 oh, years. Thank you. <laughs> I came straight out of college. Um, I went to college, at Calvin College in Grand Rapids, mm -hmm. Michigan, and uh, I wanted to teach in a Christian school, and that was my goal. And this was one of the only openings I could find, <laughs> and so I came out here to to Pennsylvania, even though I didn't know anyone at all. So you're not from this area originally. No, from Michigan. Now, I mean, you. 30 years here, obviously studied math at Calvin. Um, did you always think you'd wind up as a math teacher? Actually, ever since I was probably in about eighth grade, I wrote a little booklet about wanting to be a math teacher. <laughs> so it it's, goes back quite a ways. I think everybody who knows Ron Bierma, uh, you make the plan and work the plan. And now we find out even from eighth grade that's been the case. Uh, next to you, we have Julie Swope. And Julie is, uh, are you the, the most recent addition to our math department? I am. Okay. This is my fourth year. Fourth year, okay. And you teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? Correct. And uh, have you taught other places before this? I have. I taught for five years at Calvary Christian Academy. And while I was there, I taught only music. I did the jazz band and the lessons and the regular band and orchestra. And then I taught at the Pennington School for six years and that is in New Jersey, and I did everything there. I lived there, I drove a bus, <laughs> I taught orchestra, jazz band, chamber ensemble, pit band, algebra, learning center algebra two, and math labs. Wow. Yes. So now you've gotten yourself pretty much just math. Yes. I know you still, you still play your instrument. But... Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, since we're on that, Ron and Beth, you're both musicians too. I know this to be a fact because I get to hear you at school. Um, is that an odd mix? I mean, for me, musicians and artists are so, you know, right brain and, you know, all that creativity stuff. And isn't, you know, isn't that the opposite of mathematics? You know, that kind of left brain thing? I don't think it's the opposite at all. Okay. Why not? I think it's very, very related. Um, I think a lot of music has to do with numbers actually um, rhythm is, is all numbers and uh, it's very repetitive and mathematics is very repetitive there's all <laughs> kinds of patterns and i don't think it's a coincidence that we're all musicians there you go all three of you that is interesting i get intervals are certainly you know always regular and always dependably the same there's symbols symbols oh yeah that's Order. true you know we don't get plus and minus we get bass class and yeah. treble Sharp. class and sharps and rests okay and I almost double majored in music and math actually in college and I was uh, one of the classes that I taught or one of the classes that I took in college was a class in conducting and we went to a local high school and we actually had to conduct a band as part of the <laughs> class and uh, shortly after that, the music professor called me into his office and said, uh, the teacher at that school 
wonders if you're interested in a part-time job. Oh, wow. <laughs> helping out at the school in, in the music department. But in order to do that, uh, one of the requirements is you will need to double major in music. And uh, so you'll probably be needing a fifth year of college. So at that point, I said, no, I don't think so. That's basic math. Four years or five years that you chose. I'm glad you said no, because otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here today. Uh, Beth, we haven't spoken to you yet. Uh, Beth, you're our Philmont grad, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you actually studied with this guy over here. I did. Okay. I when did, did you graduate? In 99. And then you went where? Geneva College, and I majored in math education. And my senior year, Tom Sorkness contacted me and said, there's an opening, please apply. And I did. And I was hired and came back. The Lord brought me back. So, so how does it feel to be teaching at the side of one of your teachers? It was uh, strange at first. Uh, it took me a while to be able to call him by his first name. <laughs> but, but it's really an honor and a, and a privilege. I still see him as my mentor and advisor and teacher. Was he one of your inspirations to become mm -hmm. a math teacher? Certainly. How do you feel about that? Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Well, I mean, we've got a little bit on the table now about who you are and uh, um, what brings you to, here, to the school. And I gave you some questions in advance, so we'll go over one or two of them, and then we'll take a deep breath and, and see where, where it leads us. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about when you get to mathematics, because mathematics is really being... Um, pushed in schools across the world, you know, as a, a doorway to other things. Um, why do you folks, any one of you, um, think that it's important for a student to study, especially advanced math, not just the basics, but to move on into more advanced mathematical studies? Anybody? And should everybody study math? Yes. Well, in order for them to understand the ideas that are presented in business, politics, science, uh, other areas, they need to have a deeper understanding of math that goes beyond arithmetic. So like politics, math and politics. You have a for statistics. example? Oh, statistics. That course that so many people yes, that fear in college. Right. <laughs> and we teach statistics in our trigonometry course. Okay. Um, so knowing what um, they're trying to tell you on, on the news using these numbers, it's helpful to have a background in math. Anyone else want to add to that? Anything else you think that uh, the average student would gain from mathematical study? I think anyone can gain from the logic skills that you logic learn from, skills. from math. Mm -hmm. It's really important to be able to just start one place and be able to logically follow the process to get to the end result. Good, good. Kind of linear thinking. That and so, but right behind us here, we have uh, one of Mr. Bierman's famous uh, weekly puzzles. Uh, those of you who've been to Philmont, you know that we do that. Uh, everybody kind of soars around all week trying to figure it out. And although um, I'm not up on this floor very often, I know that it forces students to try to think logically, to solve problems. And, and uh, you know, so that goes right along with that as well. I can add to that that a lot of students don't realize how many occupations really do use math. I had a student come back to me who has become a carpenter, and he said, I use math every day in my life, um, not just simple math, uh, angles and uh, things I learned in geometry, things I learned in trigonometry mm -hmm. every day. It's kind of like learning to uh, read in elementary school. You're going to use it for the rest of your life. And I know myself, somebody who's in a totally different area, you know, in English, I mean, when I go into stores, I'm comparing prices, and I'm doing averages, and I'm looking at, you know, I'm converting. There's all kinds of different things that I use, even just on basic business math. I know, how about computers? Is, that, is mathematics an open door to computers? Oh, definitely. Sure. Okay. We have, we have students that go from film mod into computers, you think, because of our math, our math program? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. My son is uh, one. Your son is one of them. That's right. Very, very good. Very good. Um, I'll ask one more question right now. Um, the, uh, the idea of, of um, other schools and their math programs, you know, a lot of people say, well, they're going to compare. If my student's going to go into computers, if my student's going to go into engineering, um, is the math program at 
Philma comparable to other schools? What do you think? And you know, how would you how would you encourage someone to come and study with us? I think we're very comparable. Um, if you look at AP scores, AP calculus scores, we have many, many students who are scoring fives and fours. And um, I think that we three teachers here are very passionate about what we teach. And I'm not sure that you find that in a lot of schools. And I think we are very willing to help students at, at both ends of the spectrum, students who are having a very hard time, we are very willing to spend extra time with, and uh, students who uh, have a good promise in the future in math, I think we are very eager to spend extra time with them too. Now, you do have in our smaller classes probably a little more opportunity then for individual instruction, right? Mm -hmm. To meet with students and such. How about in middle school? Do you find that that's one of the things you do a lot of is to work at different levels? Yes, we have all different levels in um, every class. And we have extra help during the study hall every single day, Monday through Friday. So it's a really good opportunity for the really advanced kids that are struggling with some, like a certain problem to just come stop in. How, I don't know what to do with this one problem. Or a, a child that really has some difficulty with math, they can come every day and ask me a couple questions for help. And I, I think that one-on-one -on -one with a student is, is really helpful to mm -hmm. um. It helps you see where they're coming from, and, and you, you get to give them that personalized instruction to point them in the right direction. So in addition to your math class, you almost have the op option for a daily math lab to yes. kind of work with students in that way. Yes. Very good. Very good. Well, to continue our discussion, um, we've been talking about math as kind of an isolated thing, you know, leading us to computers, helping us to be able to count time when we play piano. Um, I wonder if Mozart was a good music, a mathematician. Probably. Probably, <laughs> right? Um, but we really haven't then uh, begun to make the next step, which is naturally um, this desire we have at Philmont to always be weaving scripture, always be weaving ministry into our classes. Well, in Bible, that's pretty easy. And uh, perhaps even if you're talking about creation and science. But how would you weave the Bible or uh, ministry outreach into math in more than just devotions and prayer. Are there ways to do that? How might you do it? Well, um, we just have been doing, in the first chapter of the seventh grade math, um, they're learning a lot of vocab that goes with math, such as um, counts and counting units and what those mean. And um, the book suggests they use a newspaper to find examples of those, um, or maybe measurements. And then instead, we, they use their Bibles and they look up different counts and counting units and, and what verse it goes with and how many measurements can they find in the Bible. And um, I think it's just a nice way to tie it in and, and just have them using their Bible, getting more familiar with it and where can they find things. And, and then someone always goes, the book of numbers. But it always takes <laughs> a while, like, oh, that would be a good place to look. And then they turn there and they're, you know, and then they can find them. Maybe their Bible does it in standard notation or maybe it does it in word and number notation. So it's interesting mm -hmm. to compare the different versions mm -hmm. and how they're written. And that certainly is more than just saying, oh, well, we'll find a way for them to, you know, look for words. Because becoming familiar with your Bible, becoming familiar with the fact that it's set in a different time with different measurement standards and such, that's all helpful to everybody. I'm mm -hmm. sure that provides foundation with Mr. Kunkel later on when students are trying to find their way around theological concepts. So, mm -hmm. great idea. I want to be in your class. <laughs> How are you, Beth? Anything that you want to add to that? Well, I would say that uh, I teach all of the, my courses from a Christian worldview. Um, that Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, is the foundation of the study of math. So that all the patterns and the order that we see come from God, who is the creator. Um, so, for example, our first chapter in trigonometry is on statistics. And we study populations and samples. And I impress upon the students uh, the fact that God, in his omniscience, knows all things about all populations. Whereas we take samples to understand a population. That's, um, that's big ideas. So, yeah. That's big, big theological ideas. And I love the idea, too, of remembering you know, that God is the God of order. Mm -hmm. And of course, that, that is your world. Mm -hmm. okay? All your patterns you mentioned earlier. 
How about you? How do you weave things together? Well, there, there are quite a few topics, actually, which can be related to, to God. Um, a big one would be the, the idea of infinity, which comes up a lot in mathematics, especially in calculus and, and uh, things to, having to do with calculus. Uh, and when we talk about infinity in math, we, we're often talking about a number that we can't describe because it is so huge, so big. And um, in that same way, we talk about God in that He has infinite power, He has infinite mercy. Um, we use that word a lot when we talk about our God because so many of the things that He, that are His characteristics, are beyond what we can express or, or know. I, you know. I just you just opened a window for me because I mean I think of math as a thing that provides all the answers, you know, that, but when you're dealing with infinity, Matt's confessing that it doesn't have all the answers, uh, and that's great. I want credit for this. I want <laughs> at least two credits for this. Um, we, I missed an opportunity before for you to talk about kind of the zenith of our program. You know, you talked about for a minute um, our AP calculus class, okay? Little Philmont, we have uh, AP Studio Art, AP English, and AP History. Um, I teach some of the same kids that are in your class, and I know AP Calc is a demanding, demanding course. Uh, but you said our kids do very well. Now that puts them against national and international standards. Talk again about their success in this, if you would. Well, I think a lot of the success has to do with the teamwork that I try to teach in the class. Um, even from the beginning of the year I have the students uh, separate into small groups, two, three, four students, and they are together as a team throughout the entire year. And they help each other with their homework, um, they help each other learn, they go through activities in class together, and, and they are, they are with, in little teams. And I'm more of a coach than an actual teacher in that class. Certainly I do teach many of the concepts, but at the same time, I'm there coaching them, and we all have a goal. Our goal is for everyone in that class to get a five on the exam. And so we're all pointing toward that, and whatever it takes to get that, <laughs> with all of us working together, even if it means coming in on a Saturday, possibly, to spend a few hours together, we're going to do that. Well, it's interesting, too, because I think of mathematics as something that is very independent study, you know, that you get over your problems and maybe the teacher checks them. But you're creating this very um, unique team situation um, that obviously is very successful. And I think that blends with your Christian ministry here. You're forcing them to work together and to care as much about the other person's success as their own. Yeah, because if someone doesn't do the homework, then there's no way to compare the homework because that person didn't do it. So it it's, has a lot of responsibility embedded in the team. That's great. Very good. Um, that reminds me, too, you mentioned you're a coach. I know you're a tennis coach here at school, and you've done softball, is it? Basketball. Or basketball. Mm -hmm. I should have known that. I'm going to be castigated for that later on. Basketball. Have you done any, any sports coaching? I have not, which is <laughs> shameful because I come from a long line of athletes. <laughs> Black sheep of the family. No, no, but you were, you know, I mean, you coached, if you know anything about, you know, the rest of our audience knows anything about uh, leading a band or leading yeah. a choir, that's sure. definitely coaching a team, you know, so we yeah. will let you off the hook totally. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine knowing you, you're a very animated conductor anyway, so you probably get plenty of I exercise. I lost a lot of weight in many concerts, <laughs> waving my arms around. <laughs> well, we have, uh, you know, I want to get to, go walk into your class a little bit. Um, so, you know, you've been teaching math for a number of years, and I'm sure you've developed all these kind of cool things. Uh, share with our, our audience just maybe uh, one or two really cool things you do that might surprise people that are being done in a math class or that you look forward to teaching every year. We'll start with Beth. In my Algebra 2 classes, we have a chance to watch parts of the, the movie The Matrix, the first one, um, a good portion of it, and then we discuss it, we talk about what a matrix is, what it is in a movie, how it compares to a matrix in math. Um, we look at the uh, worldview of the movie. How does it um, portray the condition of mankind? 
How's that compared to a Christian view? Um, so that's my favorite project of the year. That's and, that, great. and the kids usually enjoy it. I mean, who doesn't like to watch a movie <laughs> during class? So. But you make it really count. That's, and I'm sure the students have probably seen that movie before, especially going back a few years. And then you bring a whole new light to it. Yep. You know, that's terrific. That's terrific. Julie, your turn. I have two favorite projects. Um, the first is, um, well, I love the visual arts. So I try and tie that in when I can, and I especially tie it into the seventh grade curriculum when we get into the geometry section. So um, they do two things in, in that grade. They, um, we look a little bit at the uh, visual artist Kandinsky, and they do a, a piece in the style of Kandinsky oh. using all different geometric shapes. And then we just look at some of his pieces, and um, they're learning all that vocab, and it's a nice way to say um, what what geometric figures do you see in this piece of art? And it's it's a much more interesting way and a higher thinking way to, um, you know, what can they identify? So then they make their own style piece. And we also do something similar with rate multiplication. So they take a little comic strip panel and we talk a little bit about pop art. And then how can they use rate multiplication to make it much larger? And, um, and then it ties into something they do in the art class here. Certainly. And then my other favorite um, is in algebra they do Barbie bungee, so they're looking at line of best whoa, fit. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Barbie bungee. Yes. You, you, Does you that gotta, even sound fun? You've got to explain it, I mean, in detail. Okay, where do you get the top? Barbie, who's Barbie? Are we talking about? A Barbie doll. Oh, Barbie yes. doll. Okay. Yeah, Barbie doll. So and has, she bungees? She bungee jumps off the top level of the gym. So what, what they do is we have several Barbies, and um, they have to estimate as best they can by doing experiments and a line of best fit how many rubber bands they should use to make her bungee cord so that she can get as close to the ground but not hit the ground. And then um, last year, um, Phil, he actually um, videotaped it and we could watch it in slow motion right on right her head. You know, sometimes her ponytail would squish but then she'd go back up and then the winner gets as close as possible. And the best part is if she just hits even slightly even though it's just a Barbie doll, everyone groans when they see it. Like, because <gasps> you just start to forget that it's a Barbie doll. And they do <laughs> really well. And it's amazing how usually they'll come within a rubber band or two. And sometimes the only difference has been um, maybe if when they were walking, they were maybe treating it a little bit like a yo-yo and stretching them out a little. And <laughs> there have been years where they have picked the exact amount of rubber bands just from doing their, their line of best fit so exactly. And they really look forward to that. And the other kids get, when they see, just see the name because it's such a funny name on the board, they're like, oh, I can't wait to try that. Okay, so we have film, <laughs> and we have art, and we have Barbies. Barbie. I never thought that was going to be mentioned in today's discussion. you got a big follow-up to do here. you got to be able to beat this. Maybe <laughs> Kendall. <laughs> One of my favorite lessons has to do with teaching polar coordinates which um, many people are not familiar with. It's, it's a different way of locating a point on a graph instead of a, uh, going to the right or to the left and up or down as rectangular coordinates are. In polar coordinates, you have an angle and a distance, and that's how you describe where the point is. And so to practice the, the ideas that they learn in the polar coordinates, we play battleship. Okay. And so they get to hide their battleship on their coordinate plane, and uh, the other person has to guess using polar coordinates, of course, uh, where the battleship is. Well, I mean, that's that good. Barbie and battleship probably live in the same toy box, you know what I mean? So I think that all relates really, really well. Um, well, as we finish up, um, we, um, you know, I really appreciate, first of all, that you take the time to sit down with us today. I know that those watching this video are going to feel the same way. You've made, for me, you've opened a lot of, of, of windows for me understanding what you do here, first of all. I had five of my children graduate from here and had no idea that they were doing such exciting things. And uh, Mrs. Legal always did their math homework with them. I always did their English homework with them. Uh, but you know, you, you've opened the door to what math can be, what it should be, um, not just uh, in its scope and sequence, but also in a Christian environment. I mean, the things you've said have been challenging exciting and, and novel and, and you know all those kinds of things that, that make being here kind of special. 
Uh, so I really want to thank you very much. Uh, I hope the Lord will let you stay here many, many more years. I mean, you're, like I said, a young man still. You've got many years ahead of you, no problem whatsoever. Lord willing. <laughs> Lord willing. And, uh, you know, just to finish some things up, you mentioned Phil, okay? Your husband works here at Philmont. What's his position? He's the admissions and marketing manager. Okay. So, oh, use a little bit of math in that, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very, very good. And you come from where originally? I live in Langhorn. That's where you actually were born and raised, so you're just over the hill then, too. Yeah. Okay, very good. Miss Shamney. Very good. my own school district. Oh, too. really? Yes. Oh, very good. And, sir, you have three lovely children. Uh, tell us what uh, they're, they're doing now, because it all kind of relates to what we've been talking about today. Yeah. Christine is a junior at Amherst College in Massachusetts, and she is majoring in chemistry and thinking about double majoring in mathematics. Okay. And she is planning on becoming a medical missionary, so she is going pre-med and uh, is enjoying being at Amherst. Okay. My second oldest is Jeremy, and he has just started at UPenn, and he enjoys it very much, and he is uh, hoping to become uh, some type of computer scientist okay. or programmer. And then Nathan is still here at Philmont, and he is in the 10th grade. And he does like mathematics. <laughs> a lot. A lot. And computers. And computers. Very good. Well, again, thank you for being with us. I'm just going to sign off for us if you could. So just stay put. Don't laugh or leave or anything like that. Um, we're delighted that you could be with us today. Um, we're going to try to do more of this in the future with other departments. We haven't talked yet to our phys ed people or to social studies. We've yet to go to foreign language. So you never know what will be happening here in our interview series. But uh, today is a reminder that... Uh, God works in all the disciplines that we have here at Philmont with fine teachers and fine teaching and creativity uh, in abundance. And we hope that you will support Philmont, uh, sending students here, sending dollars to keep the students here, and uh, praying for us every day. Thanks a lot for being with us.